So in this video, we'll talk about an interesting concept of matrix multiplication. And um, it is a very new concept for all of you if it is the first time you see such a concept. And um, this matrix multiplication is not well defined in some cases. Um, it's actually only valid if um, the size of M1 and M2 are satisfying some special conditions. So please look at what I've written down here. Um, I say that the multiplication is well defined um, only if the M1 has size M times N and M2 has the size N times P. And please note that it basically means what? It means the number of columns in M1 must be the same as the number of rows in M2, right? So um, this what must be satisfied for the multiplication to be valid. And now let me define the matrix multiplication by giving you an example to do. And before talking about the multiplication rule for this case, you see, please take a look. The first matrix has the size 2 by 3, right? And the second matrix has the size 3 by 2. And you see in this case, for the first matrix, you have the same number of columns with the number of rows in the second matrix. So uh, we claim that the ma multiplication process is actually valid for the matrices here. And the fact is that, um, I'll just let you know here, uh, if such a condition is satisfied, the fact is that the product of the two matrices must have the size M times P. You see M is the number of rows for the first matrix and P is the number of columns for the second matrix. In this case, we expect that the product must have the size two by two, you see, because it's like two by two here. We can forget about the three in the middle, right? And, uh, and how to do this multiplication? Even if we expect that the size is two by two, we need to know the multiplication rules. So I'll give you here now. So we can make some notations for the four spot in the two by two matrices. You see uh, the way I write um, the numbers down here uh, as a notation is based on this. If I use the E, Group IJ, it basically means the position I's row and J's column, basically. So, uh, and I claim that um, the product of these two matrices uh, is basically based on the fact that the spot in the I's row and J's column is actually the same as the product of the I's row in the first matrix times the J's column in the second matrix. So can you see what I mean here? Um, I'll give you some specific numbers to work out. So let's look at this specific case here. And uh, we expect that the product should be a two by two cases, right? And um, based on this rule here, let's check it out. Uh, for the first bot, which is uh, in the first row and the first column. So I call it E subscript one one. And it is based on the product of the first row and the first column, right? Because both I and J are one in this case. You see both I and J are one. So what does it mean by multiplying the first row and the first column? It basically means you have to multiply um, the number corresponding to um, the actual position of numbers. For example, the first number on the first row must be multiplied to the first number in the first column. And you can also multiply the second number with the second number uh, for the first row and the first respectively for the two matrices. And the last one, you can also do it uh, yourself. You have to add up all the numbers after multiplying each one by each one. So uh, what I mean is the following. Basically now you have to multiply one and five plus two times minus two plus three times three. And the answer is gonna be 10, right? So I put it here, the answer is 10 for the first one. And let's do the second one. The second one is uh, in terms of position. It is E12 because it's in the first row and the second column. So what we need to do is to multiply the first row in the first matrix with the second column in the second matrix, right? And the arithmetic is going to be something like this. And um, it's gonna be 13, right? And I put the 13 here. And similarly, we can finish it off by looking at the next two spots. So you see uh, for the bottom left spot is gonna be the second row of the first matrix times the first column of the second matrix because the position is two one, right? And uh, the arithmetic is going to be 29. So you can check it yourself. And uh, similarly, we can look at the last one. The last one is in the position row two and column two. So uh, let's do it together. 
So I think the answer is going to be 1, so you can uh, check it yourself here. So at the end of this video, I would like to add some notes here. Uh, the fact is that uh, even if the multiplication is well defined, the fact is AB usually is not the same as BA, except for some very special matrices we may talk about in the future. But I'm saying in general, they are not the same. Um, I think you can easily check it yourself. So I can give you some examples like this. So you can take a look at this simple example uh, based on the A and the B given, you see. Uh, when you do the multiplication correctly, you will see that um, the product of AB is not the same as the product of BA. Um, the second note is more interesting. So you may be curious why the matrix multiplication is defined in such a strange way, and maybe the note number two gives you some explanation. And surprisingly, for such a complicated way to define the multiplication of two matrices, we'll get the fact that um, if you're given any three matrices, and let's say the matrix multiplication is well defined, and the fact is we call the matrix multiplication associative. If um, we actually do the matrix multiplication for A first, then the product of AB is multiplied to C. Uh, this product at the end is going to be the same as the product of uh, A times BC. And it may look interesting why it must be true, but the fact is um, we can actually prove it. But um, I skipped the proof here, and, and um, that's the end of this video.